Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tim Garvin with the United Way, and I have some introductions I want to make, and we have very brief comments. We are thrilled that you're here. Jim, right behind me. What a beautiful place. What an amazing day. What a great place. As I think many of us were driving up to your farm, we thought, where is this? Oh my gosh, it's heaven. That's what I had people tell me. Governor Healy, thank you for being here. Congressman McGovern, our mayor, thank you. So many elected officials, partners, philanthropists, businesses, farmers. It's fabulous to be here. I'm one of those people who usually wakes up around quarter of five. And I'll admit, I probably woke up a little bit earlier because I was in anticipation of today's event. I took our young pup, our dog, Finn, out for a walk. And even though it's about 95 degrees outside, as I was walking this morning, I smelled the beautiful hint of wood smoke. And that always is a memory trigger. Maybe it is for you also. When I smell wood smoke, I think fall is coming. I'm going to bite into crisp apples. I'm going to smell pies baking. And then we're going to end up with the greatest of all American holidays, Thanksgiving. And I tell you that because that's really what today is about. Today is a day of giving thanks. And we have a lot of thanks, big thanks to give to so many people. I think most of you know the events, the events of the last year and how our climate and severe weather have affected our farms. First, we had the Arctic blast that came down in February. It affected every single person in our state. Then, especially if you were a farmer, I did not know this, there was the frost in May. I didn't remember that we had a frost in May, and that hurt all of our fruit crops, especially our apples and our peaches. And then we all remember, we all remember, the pounding rains of the entire month of July, and especially July 10th. The image that I was told was that farmers were getting into canoes and kayaks and paddling across their fields to assess damages. There is no better visual to explain the damages that have been done. Our governor, Governor Healy, and our Lieutenant Governor, Lieutenant governor Driscoll understood, and in my opinion, brilliantly understood that we needed to rally together to support our land, our farms, and our farmers. In 10 days, from July 10th to July 20th, we went from floods to fund. Think of how quick that is, 10 days. I am still amazed about that. In the 1960s, there was an organizational development theory, and it went like this. You form, you storm, you norm, and then you perform. I think the group that really came together that created this Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund, I think we did that in about four days. I see my friend Megan Burke. Did not know her until about the 17th. By the 20th, not only were we colleagues, we were friends. And I know that will last forever. Phil Corman of CISA. Mackenzie May, who's in the back, who I've known still not long enough, but for a good amount of time. All of the United Ways. I see my friend Corey. I see Megan here from the United Way of Pioneer Valley, the United Way of North Central Massachusetts, the United Ways all working together. We call this, we call it United in Purpose. I'm going to read off the funders. We have a list of the funders. In fact, there are more than 650 people from all over the country who have supported this fund. <laughs> Governor, I'll be with you in a minute. I just want to be sure everybody gets the recognition they deserve. September 15th, my wedding anniversary, the Big E opens. Everybody should be there. John Fogarty's the opening act. If you don't know who he is, look it up. First big funder, the Big Y. Buy one of their bags this month. Support the Big Y. That was a photo op. You got that one? Good. The Markley Group, the Farm Credit East, the Davis Foundation out of Springfield, the Community Foundation out of Western Massachusetts, Comcast, Children's Hospital, Wind Companies, National Grid, John Hancock, Arbella Insurance, Covanta, New Balance, Bain Capital, Eversource, MGM Springfield, Bank of America, the Barr Foundation, Granite Telecommunications, Mass Mutual, and Liberty Mutual. If you are looking to put an all-star team a bit, Corey, you're exactly right. If you are looking to put an all-star team of businesses that understand bottom line and community matter together, that's that group. 
It is the best all-star team, and I would challenge any state in the country that here in the Commonwealth, we have the best businesses. A few weeks ago, we had an event at, in Deerfield at Berkshire Brewing, and my good friend, Congressman McGovern, ended it by saying, this is what community looks like. I ask for a friendly amendment, Mr. Congressman, because I don't think this is what community looks like. I think this is what community acts like. We take care of our farms and our farmers. We take care of each other so that we all rise up and we continue to help each other. Governor Healy, the intersection of business, of government, and community, all united in purpose, it's a vision that you created that works. What we have today is the implementation and the beginning success of that, and we are so proud. I am so honored that we received a phone call and you put this together. And we thank you forever for what you've done for our state. With that, Madam Governor. Chen, thank you. Thank you so, so much. I want to uh, thank you and your team at United Way of Central Mass for your work. You, you, you took that call and, and you got, got to work right away. And today is, is really such a happy, happy occasion. So I want to thank you, Tim, for your, for your, uh, for your work, uh, for your energy, for your poetry, and for the continued good efforts of United Way Central Mass and United Ways across this great state for the work you do day in and day out, looking after some of the most vulnerable among us. Um, before I begin, I want to um, I want to ask our commissioner of the Department of Agricultural Resources, Ashley Randall, uh, to come up and stand with all of us. So, Ashley, you can come on up. Um, I'm going to say more about Ashley. I'm going to say more about the commissioner in a minute. But um, let me let me acknowledge uh, some folks. Always wonderful to be in the great city of Fitchburg. Thank you so much. Uh, Mayor Di Natale for the work you do and for the continued partnership. It's great to meet the Lantanzis. Uh, great Jim. And where's Allison? Yeah. Thank you, Allison. She's doing all the work. She's still behind the I'll note. Um, thank you very much. A beautiful farm. Just a, just a beautiful representation of what's possible here in the state and the importance of supporting our rural economies, the importance of supporting our farms. Uh, to the entire community of Massachusetts farmers, dairy farmers, fruit growers, vegetable and berry growers, maple producers, and so much more. Uh, we just really, really appreciate the work that you do in feeding our families, in supporting our local economies, and enriching our state's quality of life. Congressman Jim McGovern, we thank you for being a champion for our state and a national leader on food security. You cover so much, you do so much. Uh, but there's no, no person more passionate about ensuring that everybody here, not just in this state, but across this country, is not gonna go to bed hungry than Jim McGovern. And so we thank you for your continued support, Congressman McGovern. State Senator Cronin, thank you for being here today. We know we're back in session. Uh, we're, uh, we're delighted to, that, you're, that you're standing with us. I know you'd also want to acknowledge some of your colleagues, Senator Joe Comerford. Uh, we were all together in farms, you know, a couple months ago. And, uh, and Rep. Natalie Blay, too, for her, her leadership. And, you know, we would not be here were it not uh, for everybody working together. Um, and that includes the funding that we sought and gratefully received from the legislature sizable funding to go and help our, our farmers. So we thank our legislative colleagues for their partnership on the natural disaster recovery funds that are starting to take applications this week. Um, to members of our team, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll had intended to be here today. Um, she's spent a lot of time with me and others out, uh, out touring farms that were so devastated. She wanted to be here, but there's other business, so you just get me, but she sends her, she sends her uh, regards and, and best wishes and most important, her gratitude to those who are making this possible. I mentioned Ashley Randall. Um, Ashley is from a farming family and uh, grew up here uh, not too far away 
and we are just so delighted that she's at the helm as our commissioner. Um, she was on the ground uh, day one of, of devastation and on the phone and on calls and wherever we needed her to be. And I know that it's a really nice day uh, for you, and we celebrate the work that you and your team has done. Uh, another important teammate, uh, your former colleague, Senator Ann Gobi. Uh, she is now Director of Rural Affairs, something that the LG and I thought was really important. We've got 181 rural communities in Massachusetts, and they need love and attention. And so for the first time ever, we have a Director of Rural Affairs. She's out in the Berkshires today, but otherwise sends her regards. And our Director of our Western Massachusetts office, um, Kristen Aleko, is here today. And she's wearing her, her you're wearing your, your t-shirt, your t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> So it was just a couple of months ago, and uh, I remember, I forget what farm we were at, but we were standing in the middle of, of, of flooding and looking around, and we came together in a, in a little bit of a team huddle and decided this is what we needed to do. We were going to go to the legislature and ask for money. We were going to go to the federal government and ask for money. And we were also going to turn to the great people and the great corporate citizens of Massachusetts and ask for help. And boy, did everybody answer the call. Um, we really, really appreciate all that came together today. We knew we were going to have to have uh, a great quarterback and somebody running point on, on this effort, and that's why we made the call to Tim uh, and his team at the United Way, and it really was just a matter of days that this fund was stood up, this Farm Resiliency Fund. And I am so grateful that today uh, we are able to announce that the fund has raised, to date, uh, over $3 million. Over $3 million. <laughs> We are uh, six, over 650 different contributors, uh, ranging in donation sizes from $5 to a $1 million. Thank you. Um, so far, we've been able to send out a, an initial round of relief checks. Uh, that started last week. 214 farms spanning every corner of Western and, Mass uh, Western and Central Massachusetts have been sent help already, totaling $2 million. Uh, donors have been able to leave comments with their donations. They talked about wanting to support, quote, the amazing people that help feed our state with wonderful high-quality crop, crops grown with love. And more than one farmer has already responded to say, quote, this will save our farm. Uh, to me, this is what the Massachusetts spirit is all about. I've talked for a long time about Team Massachusetts, and I've called upon everybody uh, on any number of issues to come forward and find ways to meet the moment and support. And I am grateful to all of you who answered that call, who showed the generosity, who showed and supported um, the resiliency of our farming community, um, and who really stand here all together. I will say the effort is far from over, and I just encourage people to, to think about ways to renew commitments to support our rural economies and to support our farmers who uh, are absolutely devastated. Um, this fund, this Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund, will remain online and available for contribution. Uh, it is also the case, as Tim said, you can buy community bags, shopping bags at Big Y grocery stores, a portion of, of which will support the fund, and we are grateful to, um, you know, I'm really grateful to our farmers and, and all of those who, who are, work, are working at our farms for their resilience and staying, and staying with us. I know it has not been easy. I also know that uh, there's a lot of support out there, and sometimes you just need to ask. Um, but my faith and my money is always on the good people of Massachusetts and our corporate citizens. Thank you so much, truly, for answering the call, because our destiny, all of us, um, is tied to one another. And the success of any one of our 351 cities and towns is directly tied to the, to the success of, of the others. And so, you know, today's a moment that represents that. And uh, we're just proud to be here today and know that we will continue to work to find ways to support our farmers and this important part of our economy, and also to find ways to to continue to protect the food security network. And I want to thank all the organizations who day in and day out are making sure that more people are fed all across the state. And uh, speaking of that, I'm going to turn it over now to our fabulous Congressman, Jim McGovern. Oh. 
Well, first of all, let me, let me thank Mayor Di Natale and Senator Cronin and Congresswoman Trahan for giving me a visa to come to Fitchburg to be at this incredible farm. Um, this is my first visit to this farm, uh, but in many respects, it, it represents uh, the challenges that agriculture faces all over the state. It's, in Massachusetts, it's, it's a lot of work to farm. You can't just grow things, you have to diversify. And we have this incredible restaurant and this pub downstairs and all these other activities going on. And to Jim and Allison, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Uh, thank you for giving this state such a gift. Uh, what a destination uh, place this is. Uh, and so I, I, I really am grateful. And I also learned that they're first generation farmers which is kind of unusual because I usually bump into farmers who have been farming in their families since the founding of the state. Um, but uh, it's not every day that you see new farmers because it's tough to break into to farming. But they have done it. Um, and we need to be wind at their back and wind at the back of farmers all across the Commonwealth. You know, go to farm stands, buy local, do whatever we can to support our local farms. Come to events at places like Hollis Hills. Uh, it is really, really important that we are there for our farmers. I want to thank Tim Garvin and the United Way. Tim is brilliant, eloquent, and compassionate, and never says no. Um, and always puts a good face on everything. Um, but it's really encouraging because it means to, to get things done. To Governor Healy um, and to Lieutenant Governor uh, um, uh, Driscoll, I want to say this administration and in all of my memory uh, has demonstrated a, a stronger commitment to agriculture than any other. And I really mean that. Um, when our, <clears throat> you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're being faced with climate fuel disasters on a yearly basis. Uh, and this year it was rains and flooding. Um, you know, I mean, for apple growers, you don't have perfect snow white apples. Uh, because of the freeze and the, and, and the and, and, uh, torrential rains. Uh, but for some of the farms in my, the western part of my district, I mean, infrastructure has been destroyed. You know, rivers rose so high that it destroyed their entire crops. Uh, and th the challenging thing for a lot of our local farmers is that the existing federal and state programs don't always n nicely fit whatever the disaster is. And we have the, the best commissioner ever in Ashley Randall. I want to thank her for her dedication um, to, to helping us here. And so sometimes you get, it's like putting a puzzle together. And so if you're missing a piece of the puzzle, you don't get the aid. Um, and so it was a brilliant idea of the governor to say, let's create this resiliency fund. Um, and let's see whether people will support it. Uh, you know, I, the, the, Tim mentioned the, we did an event at at Berkshire Brewers in Deerfield. Um, and he quoted me. I'm, I'm glad I said something intelligent. I was given so much beer, uh, I don't think I remember the event very well. Uh, the Shabadoo beer is my favorite, by the way. Um, but in any event, I mean, people, hundreds of people came and gave small donations. And then to our sponsors, our corporate sponsors here, uh, the business community, I mean, thank you for your generosity. Um, you know, checks are already going out to farmers. And we need them not just to survive, we want them to thrive. You know, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of farms in Massachusetts. In my district alone, I have over two, close to 2,000 farms. That's just in one of the congressional districts. It is an important part of our economy. We can't take them for granted. It is an important part uh, of the effort to protect our environment. Farmers are the best environmentalists important part of protecting open space and giving us access to good, healthy, nutritious food. We need to support them in every way we can. So to everybody here who's been part of this effort, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a big deal. Uh, and it wouldn't have happened without the leadership of this governor. And I will tell you, I've been, I've been touring farms, you know, I, I've lost count how many over the last several weeks, along with the commissioner and others. And everywhere we go, People, farmers are saying the same thing. Thank you for this resiliency fund, because they can spend it any way they see fit, on whatever the need is. Um, and that flexibility is important. We're fighting on the federal level for more funds. I want to thank the state Senator Cronin and his colleagues for what they've done on the state level. But we're not out of the woods yet. 
We need to keep raising money for this fund, and we need the federal government to step up and, 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 and follow the state's lead and provide more emergency assistance to our farms. So anyway, I'm just thrilled to be here, and I'm going to come back here. So thank you very much. I'm going to introduce oh. you, though. Oh. Melissa McDonald, representing Liberty Mutual Foundation and uh, vice president as well of community investments for Liberty Mutual Insurance. Uh, I want to thank Liberty for their incredible contribution of a million dollars to this resiliency fund. And, and I, again, want to thank each and every one of our great companies represented here and out here and on the boards. Um, I just really, really thank the business community for stepping up um, and, and being there, and we truly are all in this together. So with that, we welcome Melissa. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon, everyone. Okay, wait. <laughs> good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's so great to be here. Um, Governor Tim, uh, the entire team at United Way of Central Mass, thank you for your leadership in establishing this fund, and thank you for the opportunity for Liberty to be a part of it. All of us at Liberty are grateful to our governor and to your entire administration for bringing people together and striving to make Massachusetts a place where everyone Every worker, every business, and every family can succeed. Now, as a property and casualty insurer, we see firsthand the impact of a warming planet as extreme weather events affect our customers and communities all over the globe. And we know that climate change doesn't deliver an equal blow that certain lives and livelihoods are affected in devastating and disproportionate ways. We also know that the blows of climate change harm both individuals like Jim and Allison and entire ecosystems such as the local food system, which we all depend so much upon. So we are thrilled, thrilled to join a partnership with so many friends and colleagues, a partnership that strives to offer relief and restoration and peace of mind and the spiritual uplift that only a community united together can uniquely provide. To all the farmers who will benefit from these funds, we hope you know that you are not alone. We see you, we're grateful for you, and we're proud to stand alongside you as you navigate these very, very difficult days with your characteristic fortitude and resilience. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce my friend, the president of the Mass Mutual Foundation, Dennis Duquette. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you all very much. Um, I'm delighted to be here today representing the Mass Mutual Foundation and Mass Mutual. And I am here on behalf of our CEO, Roger Crandall, and on his behalf and on behalf of the whole leadership of Mass Mutual, I'd like to extend our thanks to Governor Healy and to Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for the incredible rapid response that they organized to make this possible here today. It's really remarkable uh, when you see the amount of resources, people, financial, et cetera, that have come together in record time to really rise to this occasion. And we are so excited to be part of it and so grateful for your leadership to make this happen. And of course, you can raise all the money in the world, but at the end of the day, what really matters is implementation. And we don't have good implementation if we don't have great community partners. So 
We've got the United Ways here represented, certainly the United Way of Central Massachusetts and affiliated United Way organizations. And my friends from the Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts who have also been integral in the implementation of this fund and the organization of this fund. Our thanks to them because we know without them, none of this would be possible. We'd be, we'd be up against the wall not knowing what to do. They're the boots on the ground working with the farmers on our behalf. And so to them, I want to say thank you and a round of applause. And of course, why are we here today? We're here because of the farms. And the farms, as, as previous speakers have noted, mean so much to this Commonwealth. There are over 7,400 farms in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. They consume, they, they, I'm sorry, they exist on roughly half a million acres of property throughout the Commonwealth. They employ thousands of people. Nearly 30,000 people are employed by farms. Farms, as, as has been noted um, earlier, are often legacies. So they are generational. We are in a first-generation farm here today, but we know that there are many farms that are multi-generational. And so this hits at the heart of people in our community that we care about who are our neighbors and who we want to help. They provide us our food, but they also provide to countless food banks and food pantries throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for people who are challenged by food insecurity. And that is a very important role that we at the Mass Mutual Foundation support and are so glad to be here to support the people who make that happen. The farmers and their families, as I said, are really integral to this. And it reminds me, takes me back to the story that we often tell at Mass Mutual about our founding. Mass Mutual was founded in Springfield, Massachusetts in 1851 when 31 people in that community came together and pooled their resources. They raised roughly $100,000, which in 1851 was very significant. And the reason they did this was because they felt it was imperative that they look out for one another. That in the event that somebody have faced some sort of calamity or unexpected circumstance, that they would be there to take care of their neighbor or their family member or their friend. And so it's in that spirit, that spirit that we love to call mutuality at Mass Mutual, uh, that informs our work to this day through the Mass Mutual Foundation. And it is in that spirit that we are so glad and so proud to be here today with all of these wonderful people here on the stage and all of you wonderful people out there. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Dennis. I also uh, want to call now from Granite Telecommunications, uh, representing... Rob Hale and, and all is Michael Galvin, uh, Granite's Chief Administrative Officer. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, Congressman um, McGovern. Uh, we're very pleased to be here. For those of you who may not know Granite Telecommunications, we're uh, a Quincy, Massachusetts-based uh, company that provides voice and data services to multi-site businesses um, throughout Massachusetts and throughout the country, including two uh, farms. Um, I don't know of this one yet, but we'll see. Um, um, but the reason that we're here is uh, for the community. Massachusetts, Granite has deep roots in Massachusetts, which include uh, Western and Central Massachusetts, where we have thousands of businesses that we serve. Um, uh, it's also the birthplace and place that Rob Hale, who wishes he could be here, um, uh, was born and raised. Uh, and we talk a lot about community uh, at Granite Telecommunications. Um, it's, it's, it, it was obvious to us as a Massachusetts-based uh, employer that there was significant need to help our community here in Massachusetts uh, earlier this year with the farm uh, and the weather events that occurred. Uh, we were so pleased uh, to be able to do so. And so I just wanted to express our thanks uh, for the opportunity uh, to give to the fund and to participate in the program. Uh, <clears throat> with that, I'll turn it over to um, uh, Jim Latanzi uh, from Hollis Hill Farms. Thank you for hosting us, Jim. I want to speak on behalf um, of myself as well as my fellow farmers here from Central and Western Massachusetts and the recipients of these funds. Um, this is our 10th year farming here and probably the most challenging. 
As a farmer, you have to be resilient. And I'll tell you, it takes the wind out of your sails when you work so hard and watch it wash away. To know that we have the support of our governor, of our legislators, of our business partners, to kind of come out of nowhere and say, hey, we're here to help. Uh, most little wind back into your sails. We can do this. You know, we don't chose this profession for money. Uh, we do it because we, we love our role, we love the land, we love our farms, we love our communities. Money helps. <laughs> we don't do it alone, and we know that. And so I can only speak for myself, but I, I know that I speak for many and that we're incredibly appreciative of the financial support, but also knowing that we have such a great community behind us. And, and to see this today is incredibly uplifting. It lets you know that we can do this. And, and it, it pushes us all forwards. Because we have to be, as farmers, eternal optimists. And tomorrow will always be better. The sun may come out, may not. We'll see. But uh, we, we know that we can do it. And, and knowing that gives us the drive to keep pushing. Because I know we're not the first time to have weather that influences us, whether it be that frost that we lost all of our peach crop, the frost in May when we lost a lot of our apple crop and have lots of damage we're dealing with, you know, to the amount of rain that we fought and the amount of fungus that we're fighting, and the fact that when you know, we're used to being able to bring the best looking product forward, and it's been a challenging year, and your, your customers that aren't used to seeing spots on your apples, or you know, a, a, a squishy spot in a strawberry, or however it was that we faced this year, it's hard because you do all the work, and we also feel that we're letting people down because we work so hard, but the product isn't quite right, or we don't even have the product. And, and it's been, it's been a very challenging season, but we know we can get through it, and having, having the support that we do, we'll be here next year. For that, I want to say thank you. The appreciation, I don't know if I can express it in words, but it's there. Jimmy and I go way back. <clears throat> he came into this, this business, if you will. He's not just a farmer. He's a businessman and a very successful one who rescued this facility and makes, it made it what it is today. Uh, and farming, I, I don't know anything about farming, but I do know this. It's a hell of a job. It's very, very difficult. You're, you're dependent on so much out of it. It's not within your control. And uh, for him to make a success out of this, and this is, this is a destination site for not just North Central Mass, certainly for the city of Fitchburg, but North Central Mass included. <clears throat> My economic development director is here today, Mary Jo Boart. She knows better than anyone. I also want to recognize Corey Ang. Corey, United Way, thank you for what you do, <laughs> far beyond what other things else is doing. And again, uh, Senator Cronin and I, we couldn't be happier about what's happening here. And certainly our thanks to the administration, to Governor Healy and to uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for their efforts and, and to have the thought to, bring, to put this on the table and to make this uh, something that's available uh, to people who are sorely in need of it. So we thank them, uh, certainly from the city of Fitchburg and the people of Fitchburg and Jim Latanzi as well. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Senator John Cronin. I just want to reiterate my thanks to the people assembled behind us. I used to work for Jim Latanzi when I was in high school. He, t he tells me I was his best employee ever. Um, but I think we get, from listening to Jim, we all get a sense of 
the purpose that is tied to the land, that's tied to the product, that's tied to the people and generations of people who work the land here in the Commonwealth on our farms. Uh, and I, I will just end by a, a quick anecdote about Governor Healy and, and her team. Her and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll came out to uh, the World Farmer site in Lancaster, and she pulled me aside and she said, uh, you know, John, we got to get to work. The cavalry's not coming. Uh, it's up to us to deliver for these farmers and keep these small businesses afloat. Uh, and Governor, th the cavalry was coming. You brought them here. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm, we're happy to take on-topic questions, and then maybe I can visit with some of you later after I shop. <laughs> any questions for any of us? Could you speak up a little bit louder? Sorry. Well, let me, let me just say a couple things. Um, look, we, we continue to see adverse weather events, serious bad weather, right, in all different forms. We had nine tornadoes in Massachusetts. I don't know that a governor's had nine tornadoes in a summer in Massachusetts history before. So a key to this is building resilience, which is part of, you know, it's, it's why this fund is named what it's named. It's why it will remain up and running because what happened here in central and western Massachusetts, we know there's a threat for our cranberry grow growers in, in southeastern Mass, maybe with the next weather event. We want to find ways to support farmers and their innovations to build resilient farms, sustainable farms. Uh, we also know that we're, we need continued infusion of investment for infrastructure. I'm grateful to the Biden-Harris administration, nearly $1 trillion available to states for climate-related funding, uh, whether it's for infrastructure uh, or a whole range of things. And this is really, really important. So, you know, we're going to look to make the most of that, um, but certainly building resilience uh, in at every turn is something that we're going to need to do, including when it comes to our, our farms and the rural economy. I don't know, Commissioner Randall, if you have anything with respect to the gentleman's question about the East Hampton farm in particular. Sure. And thank you for the question. I will add on to the governor's comments regarding resiliency. At the department, we do have the Climate Smart Agricultural Program, and we've been working with farms to make them aware of that funding opportunity, as well as the Natural Disaster Fund that was launched yesterday by the administration, and that helps with infrastructure looking long term. So we are thinking creatively, understanding that these weather events are becoming more extreme and we're working with the farms to intentionally put into place infrastructure that will make them more resilient. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you... Thank you. And again, many thanks to all of our incredible funders here, and uh, a huge thanks to Tim Garvin and folks at United Way.